Hi, everyone. My name is Justice Shorter. Thank you so much for pressing play on this video about public speaking. Um, I personally do a lot of public speaking. I do it professionally for my job, but I also do it personally because there are so many issues that I am just fervently committed to and passionate about. And sometimes you just got to speak out. But I wrote a whole essay about fear and some of the different components um, of fear and how those things weave into your mind when you are trying to speak and how those things can very much prevent you from speaking or silence you in some ways, those fears, those apprehensions, those insecurities. And so I decided to speak today, not from a place of prepackaged material, not from a position of being finely polished, but I decided to speak off the top of my head and also from the bottom of my heart today, because often when I am seen speaking publicly, it looks very polished. It looks kind of refined and people think that that shit comes easily. And in many ways, I do consider it to be a gift. I consider my voice to be a gift. I hope you consider the ways that you communicate to be a gift as well. Um, so in that sense, I am honored uh, always to have the privilege of speaking to people. But it is also something that I have had to cultivate over many hours, long nights, excruciating days. There have been many tears. There have been many fears. There have been many anxious um, accounts <laughs> that I could give you <laughs> of me being wrecked with anxiety late at night. I have tons of gray hair to prove it <laughs> um, in terms of me being afraid to use my voice. And the essay kind of talks about this, but I wanted to expound upon it more. If you are afraid to speak for any reason, and I'm speaking to this issue of fear because the coordinators of this program told me that some of the things that you all mentioned was the fear of public speaking and being afraid to mess up or make a mistake. And I want to affirm you by saying that your fears are valid. So many of us who come from marginalized communities, we have been fired for speaking. We have been, in some cases, um, evicted from homes. We have been killed. We have been pushed aside. We've been incarcerated. We've been institutionalized, right? So we, we are very well familiar um, from a generational understanding, from a community understanding and awareness, the vicarious trauma that many of us have dealt with in terms of observing others who have been really penalized for speaking out publicly in ways that were deemed undesirable or disruptive to the status quo or just different. So we know what it means and we know the risks that, that we take when we speak publicly. So I, your, your fears, they're real. I understand that. that it, I, I get it. I have those fears. But the fears, they have to also be looked at in comparison to freedom. What does it mean to let yourself be free, even if it is only for a few moments? To let yourself speak freely about something that is truly tied not only to your own liberation, but also the liberation of those you love, the communities that you come from, the communities that you identify with. Do your words create a pathway for others to be liberated? Do your words somehow break the chains or the confines of conditions that you all have had to deal with for way too damn long? Do your words open up a window to places that have been stifled? Do your words open yourself up to personal and internal discovery? What does that mean for you? I will tell you a story. I was around 12 years old and there was a talent night. It was a poetry night actually, and I love poetry. And I was set to, to perform alongside my, 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 a really good friend of mine. And I forgot the damn words. It was so embarrassing. <laughs> but that, that event was traumatizing as hell because I, it, it was, I was just so embarrassed and I kind of how to like not forget the words again at an event. Um, and I can remember the hook because we were rapping for some reason at this damn poetry night. And I remember the first line, and I mind you, I was 12, don't judge me. 
Um, the first lines was, this is poetry now. We're going to give it to you, right? We're going to open some doors and shine some lights on these young, bright poets. They're going to flow it. <laughs> we're 12. I don't know why we sound like Run DMC. Anyway, um, <laughs> I feel like the next line should be my uh, Adidas. Y'all are probably way too young to understand those references. It's fine. It's fine. <laughs> anyway, um, but I also stumbled and forgot the lines a few years later, um, maybe a year or two later when I was doing a Dr. Angelou poem, Phenomenal Woman for Black History Month. I was doing that with one of my best friends. I forgot the words. <laughs> and so sometimes um, those fears come from very real places in terms of direct experiences that you might have and forgetting things and maybe not being as perfect as you would imagine. But my question to you is, what the fuck is perfection? Right, and why do we need to aspire to that? Perfect for me is progress, right? So what indicates progress for you? What indicates something that is passionate for you? What indicates something that is purposeful for you? So fuck being perfect, can we be purposeful, right? Why are you speaking? Why are you opening your mouth or why, however you're communicating, whether it's signing, whether it's writing, what, is it that you are trying to say? And who are you saying it to? Those are the things that truly matter. I urge you to figure out what your practice is because I could tell you a bunch of generic, these are the public speaking one-on-ones that I could tell you that, but all of that shit already exists on the internet and I don't use them. So I'm not going to tell you things that I don't use. I can tell you what I do. I have a practice myself of saying a little mantra, a little prayer before I start. Now, whatever works for you, whatever your belief is, whatever your rituals will be, that is entirely up for you to decide. You could have a song that you listen to to get you in your zone. You could have certain things that you say, certain people that you call, certain things that you do, but develop a practice for yourself that works for you. Not something that works for some public speaking expert and they tell you these are the things that you must do in order to be a great public speaker. Figure out for yourself what feels good to your body and your mind and do that. Before I even started speaking just now, I said these words and I'll say them for you now. It's, it's, it's me kind of revealing a, a, a very personal piece of myself, <laughs> but I will, I will give a piece of me to you in this way. Um, but I said these words and it's, a, it's personally a prayer for me, but again, does not have to be that. It can be whatever you want it to be. But I say these words, God, please let whatever I say be a blessing or a benefit to someone. Please use me as a vessel. Please bless my heart, my head, my hands, my lips. And please let me enter into the hum. And for me, the hum is a place of humility. It is a place of hope. I heard Shonda Rhimes once say this. Shonda Rhimes is the creator of Grey's Anatomy and uh, several other shows. Um, but she used to say when she writes, she tries to enter into this flow, into this hum, into this place of awakening. Um, it's almost an out-of-body experience. You are in the zone, so to speak. And I always pray to enter into that space. Now, what do you hope for? What do you intend um, to do in order to get yourself into a place of calmness, a place of stillness? Even if it's not a place of stillness, it could be a place of, of, of activity and movement because stillness does not work for all of us. Um, so what is that for you? And I ask you this, I pose these questions because all of these are things for you to define. It is not something that I can prescribe for you. These are personal decisions. These are personal practices that only you can develop. And I will end by saying this, you will mess up. I mess up. I, to this day, am scared as hell sometimes before I speak. I am anxious. I'm always fearful that I will say something that will piss some people off and folks will come for me and folks will do this. I, I have those fears. This is true. I, I'm, I'm fearful that I wouldn't, I'm not properly representing my community. I'm fearful that I'm not properly representing myself. Anybody who's, who's, who's doing this type of work and they don't have those concerns, I'm, I'm also questioning. <laughs> You always want to be doing a kind of a check, right? A check in with yourself. Make sure, am I doing this for the right reasons? Am I checking in and with my community? Am I, um, you know, so those check-ins are, are necessary, right? They're necessary. Um, and I have those check-ins and, and they can sometimes be fearful. They can sometimes induce anxiety. 
um, because you're always, you know, concerned a little bit about messing up or making a mistake. But I, I urge you to not be so concerned about that and be more so devoted to developing a network of people to surround yourself with. Who will you call if something goes awry? Who will you call or connect with if you need someone to just tell you the truth and say, that was bullshit, you need to pull it back? Or to say, they are wrong. You said what you needed to say. You stood in your truth. You go to sleep proud tonight, right? You need to have a circle of people to call on. Um, or you need to be able to tell yourself those things. Um, but sometimes we, we, we can't understand things that are beyond our, our knowing or that are outside of ourselves, right? So sometimes you may think that you did a stellar job and you may need a friend to tell you. You said that and it was offensive to an entire community, right? You have to be accountable in that way if you are going to be speaking publicly. But I hope that you all will take something from this body of work that I produced for this program. And I hope that you will move forward in a way that allows you to be moved more by the promise of freedom rather than the possibility of fear taking hold of you and not allowing you to do the things that you are truly called to do in this world. And I say this because we need you. We so desperately need you. We need your voice. We need your passion. We need your energy. We need your joy. We need your laughter. We just need you. And I am already thankful in advance to have heard you and to have been in community with you and to be connected with you both now and in the future because I haven't met any of you yet. But I'm speaking it into existence in advance. <laughs> That's all for me. I hope y'all have a wonderful, wonderful, wonderful um, rest of your program and continue doing beautiful and phenomenal things. You can check me out on Twitter at just a shorter one if you have any questions or want to continue in conversation. I'll take care.